Hey calculus class, today you're going to learn topic 24, the mean value theorem. So what the mean value theorem says, or in shorthand, MVT, it says to let f be a function that satisfies the following two hypotheses. 1. f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b. 2. f is differentiable on the open interval a to b. And the only reason why this is open is because you cannot differentiate at the endpoints. Then there is a number c, so another x value c, in the interval a to b, such that the derivative at that x value equals the value of the uh, slope of the line that goes through the endpoints. In other words, there exists some x value in the interval whose tangent line has the same slope as the slope that goes through the endpoints or the slope of the secant line. Or equivalently, you can say that f of b minus f of a equals f prime of c times b minus a. That's just multiplying b minus a on both sides. So what this means graphically is <clears throat> that the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line through the end points. The tangent line is parallel to the secant line. Otherwise the derivative is equal and other otherwise the derivative is equal to the slope of the secant line. So here's one graphical example. Or here's one where it has multiple uh, tangent lines. So there's the secant through the endpoints. And then there are two tangent lines within that same interval that have the same slope as the slope of the secant line or are parallel to the secant line. So let's try an example. Use this graph of f to estimate the values of c that satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem for the interval from 0 to 8. So what that means is you need a ruler. Take your ruler and draw the secant line from 0 to 8. Okay. Then take your ruler and slide it up and down, keeping the same slope and sketching all of the lines where it would be tangent. So if you slid it up, you'd have a tangent line right about here. And that's approximately c equals 1, right? So we're saying that c is the x value. And as you're sliding it down, you'd see a tangent line about here, approximately 3.2. And you'd have one here, approximately 4.5. And, and one down here, approximately 6.1. So let's verify the two conditions required by the mean value theorem and then find a suitable number c guaranteed to exist by the mean value theorem. So we're given the following function and we're looking on the interval from 1 to 3. So first thing we have to check is condition 1, which is f of x is continuous on 1 to 3 because f is a polynomial which is continuous on all of its domain. Then condition 2, f of x is differentiable on 1 to 3 because f is a polynomial which is differentiable on all of its domain. So first thing I need to find is the slope of the secant line. So I'm going to take my endpoints and find the slope. So when I do that, I would get 15. So now what I want to know is at what x value does the slope of my tangent line equal 15? Or you can think about it as when does the derivative equal 15. So I find my derivative, set it equal to 15, solve for x, so x equals 2. This means that there is a tangent line parallel to the secant line at x equals 2. Alright, why don't you go ahead and try this one on your own. Alright, <clears throat> let's see how we did. So first check the two conditions, all right? It is continuous because we have a polynomial. It is differentiable because it's a polynomial. So now I can find the slope of my secant line. 
So I plug in the values of the endpoints, I get three. Now, when I take the derivative using the chain rule and setting the derivative equal to three, I get the threes will cancel, so I'm left with the following. S square root both sides, so that means I get that x minus one equals one, or x minus one equals negative one. So I get either x equals two or x equals zero. And I cannot use x equals two because that is an endpoint and the C value cannot exist at an endpoint because we do cannot have a tangent line at an endpoint. So only x equals zero works because you can't have a tangent line on the endpoints. All right, why don't you go ahead and try this example. All right, condition one, uh, g of x is continuous from zero to two because it is a rational function. g of x is differentiable from zero to two because it's a rational function. So I'm gonna find the slope of my secant line first, plug it into my function, the endpoints into my function, and simplify, so I get 3 eighths. Find my derivative by using the quotient rule. Simplify that a little bit. Now I'm gonna set my derivative equal to 3 eighths, and then I'm going to solve. So all I did, <clears throat> was cross multiplied and basically the threes cancel because the top equals the top. So what I'm looking for is when what x values does the bottom equal eight. So square root both sides, so I get plus or minus two square root two. Subtract two, so I get x equals negative two plus or minus two square root two. Check to see which one of these exists on my interval and only one of them does, so x equals negative two plus two square root two. Only the positive value works since it's in the given interval. All right, let's look at Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem is a special case of the mean value theorem. So this theorem says, let f be a function that satisfies the following three hypotheses. So the first one's the same as the mean value theorem. F is continuous on the closed interval from A to B. The second one is also the same as the mean value theorem. F is differentiable on the open interval from A to B. And what is, makes this a special case of the mean value theorem is this next one. That the value of the function at A and the value of the function at B are equal to each other. Then there is a number C in A to B such that the derivative equals zero. So what this means graphically is Rolf's theorem means that the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero, or is equal to the slope of the secant line, which would be zero. Since f of a equals f of b, when you draw your secant line, you're gonna get a horizontal line. So therefore, the slope of that horizontal line, or that secant line, is zero, and you're still looking for a tangent line that is parallel to the secant line and in, in which both would be horizontal lines. So both would have a slope of zero. So <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and verify whether f of x equals three x squared minus 12 x plus one satisfies Rolle's theorem on the interval from zero to four and find all numbers c that satisfy f prime of c equals zero. So first thing, check to see if it's continuous. Yep, we have a polynomial. Differentiable, yep, polynomial. Condition three, so that means I need to make sure that when I plug in zero and when I plug into four into my function, they equal the same y value. So when I plug in zero, I get one. When I plug in four, I get also one, so good. So now I can find some C value where the derivative equals zero in this interval. So <clears throat> I now want to find the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. And at x equals two, I have a horizontal tangent line, which is um, parallel to the secant line at the endpoints. <clears throat> All right, go ahead and try this example on your own. 
All right, so first thing you have to verify all three conditions. So it's continuous because it's a polynomial. It is differentiable because it's a polynomial. Condition three, so plug in five over two, you get zero. When you plug in three, you also get zero. So that means the endpoints have the same y value. So I can take the derivative, set it equal to zero, find x. And at this x value, that means I have a horizontal tangent line within this interval that <clears throat> is parallel to the secant line. All right, some mean value theorem application problems. In the real world, it would be unreasonable to expect to travel at a constant rate for any length of time. Until now, you have not had the tools to deal with such a situation precisely. It is only in calculus class that you have been introduced to the concept of rates that vary. So if we look at this example, Clark is driving by car 213 miles from Seattle to Portland. He took exactly three hours on his trip and made no stops. Using the mean value theorem, prove that at some point, Clark went above 70 miles per hour. So the mean value theorem says that the average rate of change must equal the instantaneous rate of change within the time interval. So I want to show that if I was to take his average rate of change, which would be distance over time, <clears throat> that has to equal the derivative. And once I simplify that, I get 71. So I'm saying that the derivative has to be equal to 71 at some moment in time when Clark was traveling. And this shows that 71, that Clark's average rate is 71, which is faster than the 70 miles per hour. And according to the MVT, Clark had to go 71 miles per hour at some moment in time during the three hours in order for his average rate or his average speed to be 71 miles per hour. All right, let's try this one. A trucker handed in a ticket at a toll booth showing that in two hours he had covered 159 miles on a toll road with speed limit 65 miles per hour. The trucker was cited for speeding. Why? So if we were to take, find his average rate and show that his, it could equal his instantaneous rate at some moment in time. So I take his distance over time, which gives me 79.5. So this is telling me that the trucker had to go exactly 79.5 miles per hour during the two hours at least once since this is his average rate which is much faster than the speed limit of 65. So let's do some AP style questions. Number one, according to the mean value theorem there exists at least one x equals c on the interval from one to b such that the derivative equals negative one half. Find b if f of x equals 8x minus x cubed. And you are allowed to use a graphing calculator. So I need to find the value of my secant line first from um, 1 to b. So once I put in 1 and b into my function, I get the following. And that means that this secant line has to be equal to the derivative, and they tell me what the derivative is, which is negative one half. Now I, what I'm looking for is I want to solve for b. So I cross multiply, distribute, and go ahead and get one side equal to zero. And this is cubic, and you may use your graphing calculator to actually find the zeros if you like and you would get that b equals 1 or b equals 2.28. So in order for this to work, um, the other end point is 2.28 since the beginning is 1. 
Okay, <clears throat> consider the graph of f of x equals x times sine x on the domain negative four to four. How many values of c in negative four to four appear to satisfy the mean value theorem? You may use your graphing calculator. So if I was to take the derivative of the following using the product rule, and I was to find the slope of the secant line, I would get the following. And I want, and this would become zero, sorry. And that means I am looking for when is the derivative equal to zero. So this right here is an example of Rolle's theorem as well, <clears throat> since the secant line has a slope of zero. So <clears throat> after doing all of that, you can either attempt to solve for x by hand, or if you were to plug in this um, <clears throat> derivative, sine x plus x cosine x, and look at the interval from negative four to four, you would see that the derivative has a value of zero three different times. So there are three values of C where the derivative is zero. Our last example is the function f is continuous and differentiable on zero to 10. Use the table of values to determine an interval for which, according to Rolle's theorem, the derivative equals zero for some c on the interval. So if I was to plot these values okay, and look at them, what I would notice is that somewhere between three and seven, the graph has a horizontal tangent line because that's what this says. I am looking for a horizontal tangent line because the graph changes from increasing to decreasing. So there has to be some interval right around here where there is a horizontal tangent line. So I would say from three to seven. Well, I hope you enjoyed the mean value theorem and I will see you in class. Have a good night.